I'm making this video because my own Python journey so far has been more difficult than it needed to be. And that's mainly because of a variety of different points of view about which platform you should be using or which is best. And the result has been for me some confusion about whether I should be using this package or that and which is better. And I'm going to offer a fairly modest introduction and short guide on some suggestions about what I wish I had known when I was starting out. And perhaps if I can help you avoid some of the wasted time and some of the rabbit holes that will make the video worth it. So this is a production of someone who is probably not very much further down the Python learning journey than you are. So take the video advisedly and let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for places where I got things wrong, which is highly likely to have happened. But uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens. The steps I'm going to show you are carried out on a Windows 10 PC. For Windows 11, the steps are going to be pretty much the same. You should begin by creating a folder for your Python projects. I chose to make that folder right at the top of my C drive and to name that folder Python Demo Projects. Once you've done that, you need to open the command prompt in Windows. You can do that by clicking at the bottom left on a Windows 10 machine on the Windows icon or by typing command prompt into the Windows search box. Once you have opened up the command prompt window and just before we carry on, I encourage you to have no fear about this possibly unfamiliar part of your computer's functionality. You're not going to break anything. It's probably something that you do not work with on a day-to-day -day basis, but it is, I think, going to be not as scary as you might at first believe. Once you've opened the command prompt, make sure that you have changed your directory to the folder that you created for your Python projects. In my case, I type in cd space backslash and then the name of my directory, Python Demo Projects. Then let's confirm that you in fact do not have Python already installed on your machine by typing Python space dash dash version. In my case, I have already installed Python 3.12. And in your case, I'm assuming because you're watching this video that you will get some kind of error message from Windows along the lines of Python is not recognized or similar. After that, you need to see if Jupyter Notebook is installed. And that is a similar process. We type in Jupyter space dash dash version. And for me, with Jupyter already installed, I get a list of the version numbers of various Jupyter core packages. But for you, assuming that you do not yet have Jupyter Notebook installed, you will see uh, Jupyter is not recognized error message from Windows. Now it's time to close your command prompt window and move over to what I think will be more familiar territory, which is your browser of choice. In my case, I use Mozilla Firefox and into the Google search box, I type Python download. Clicking on that brings us to those results and it is most likely going to be the first one on your Google search results page that you will need to click through to. And that is the official python.org URL. And on that page, you are looking for the yellow download Python button. In this case, it is version 3.13.0. Once the download has completed, you need to click on the .exe installation file in your downloads folder. 
here on Firefox, you are able to run it directly from the browser window. And having done so, you will see this message appearing. To start the installation, you need first of all, and this is really important to take notice of that add python.exe to path box, which is unchecked at the bottom of that installation window. And you need to check that before proceeding, before you do anything else. Having done that, choose the install now. Don't choose the custom installation option. Just click on install now. You will likely be asked to accept various default settings and to give some permissions depending on your operating system. Just click through on all of those, give permissions where required, accept the defaults, and it should be the case that you end up with some kind of success message. In my case, with Python already installed, I'm not going to go through those steps. It would create a mess with my PC, so I'm just going to cancel. But in your case, you would run through that installation. It's very easy and quick, and you will get a success message at the end. Once you've done that, you need to close your browser window and it is time to go back to the command prompt. Over here, we are going to type in Python dash dash version and we are going to make sure that you have this time not some kind of error message, but instead you have Python 3.0. 13.0 appearing depending on what version is available when you watch this video and follow the instructions. Next we are going to install Jupyter Notebook. This does not involve going back to the browser. Here we are going to use the pip install command and run it directly from the command prompt. So your command to enter is pip space install space notebook and you press enter and you get a lot of stuff happening on the screen but at the end of it you will simply be returned back to your python folder of choice and now we are ready to write our first python program in jupyter notebook to get to Jupyter Notebook, you start in the command prompt, which is where we are right now, and you type in, unsurprisingly, Jupyter Notebook, and then press enter. What happens next is quite interesting. It is something that filled me with consternation when I first saw it, but let's just go through and let the system do what it does, and I'll explain as we go. So having typed Jupyter Notebook and pressing enter, we find the system automatically leaving the command prompt and opening up our browser window. And in the browser window, you will see that you are at our Jupyter homepage. In order to write your first Python program, first you click on new at the top right, and then your first Python program is going to be to output the message, hello world, which is something of a lighthearted superstition in programming circles. It also carries out a test check that your programming environment is running properly, but the hello world as your very first program is a lighthearted tradition to bring good luck apparently. In Python, the command is print open bracket Hello world, and then this takes a bit of time to get used to, but once you've got it, you've got it. You don't press enter to run that particular line of code, you press shift enter in Jupyter. And there underneath that code block labeled one, we see the output, hello world. And that is your very first Python program in the Jupyter Notebook environment. To close things down, Click on Untitled at the top of the page, then enter a suitable name for your project, in my case, Project 1. Then File and then Save, and finally File Shutdown. 
and then you can safely close your browser window. If you've done all of the above, nothing remains to be done in the command prompt, which you can now close and forget about. And that is it for your setup of Python on Jupyter Notebook and running your very first Python program. I think with the video carrying on quite long at this stage, I'm going to leave it up to you. If you have any questions about what this Jupyter Notebook running in a browser window is all about, or whether you need Anaconda or not, and what Visual Studio Code is all about, just leave a question in the comments section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And thanks very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.